All right, guys. So today, let's talk about rifle setup. Now, rifle setup is a very personal choice, and it's really dictated by the uh, necessities of whatever you're doing. So if you're just like, hey, general purpose, I just want to have a rifle at home kind of thing, um, then you may not have as much shenanigans as I do on my rifles. But if you're of the sort that loves to train, tries different things, gets into uh, the deeper side of the training world and stuff, and uh, get a little bit past you know, general purpose, then you're going to see yourself slowly evolving the way that you have your rifle. Now, I think it's, I see it in almost every rifle class I teach. Uh, somebody comes to class, they have their rifle set up how they think is the most optimal for them, or they're not sure, so they just slap things on. No big deal. Like, that's why you come to learn. Um, when they arrive, right, they get all excited, and they're like, all right, cool, and they're looking around, and they're like, damn, everybody's rifle looks different from mine. <laughs> and that's okay, right? Everybody's, everybody's is going to look different, right? Because everybody has a different setup. Right? I haven't been to a class in a while, unless it was law enforcement or mill, that everybody had the same setup or everybody had the same rifle. Right? There's so many options out there, we have to kind of play around with them and figure out what works for you. Now, what, what worked for me back in like 2013, uh, like in this picture, versus what works for me now are completely different. Right? There's, there's different technology that comes out, there's your evolution in your training, the way that you train personally, the things that you get into, the things you start to uh, enjoy about shooting, right? For, for a good example is my night vision stuff. Night vision stuff has evolved for me to the point where I'm not using the standard lasers anymore. I'm using the standard laser, right? Like the mall. But setting yourself up for success is going to change based off of you, your body type, your rifle, and your needs. So let's talk a little bit about my setup and why I set them up this way. So we'll start from uh, front to back, like it should. And one of the things that you'll notice is the majority of my guns are suppressed. Um, I may not leave them suppressed all the time, right? I take my suppressors off, but when I shoot them, I shoot majority of the time suppressed because I like it. Um, it's also kind of good for your hearing and your uh, the, the concussion that you're getting depending on what you're doing and where you are and the environment you're in. The concussion based off of some of these bad boys can, uh, or not the suppressor, but some of the guns that are out there, especially with those comps, nobody likes you in class, um, <laughs> will we'll definitely start causing a lot of headaches. You'll start to see a deterioration in people's um, abilities to do work or learn things because they're standing next to somebody with a comp and they're literally doing this the entire time because they're getting smashed in the face by, uh, by concussion. It's just uncomfortable. Also, it's not good for you. I, I like things that are good for me. So suppressors tend to do that for me. Um, I tend to suppress almost everything I own. Um, maybe not everything gets a suppressor, but everything can take one of my suppressors that I have. So I have a couple different ones. Um, but I highly recommend using a suppressor. Going further back, uh, I like to set my rifles up with light and laser because I primarily do things in daytime and nighttime. Right, so I optimize my gun setup for that exact thing. I like to have the ability to do that. Now, some of my rifles, I just don't have enough lasers for them. So they kind of sit by the wayside with just a light, and I'll show you one of them in a little bit. Um, but most of them get some form of laser, and now uh, I have uh, um, pretty much more malls than I do any of the other lasers. So the mall being my favorite laser, I tend to put that on most of my my working guns or the guns that I use for a lot more stuff. Um, one of the things that I'll do too that, that people ask me about is why do you put your laser and light on the same side, John? And mainly that's for just consistency. So if I am doing white light stuff and I leave a barricade and I'm used to having my light come out on that right side, it's, it's consistent as uh, the same with my laser. So if my laser comes out that side and my light comes out that side, it, there's a consistency to it. I prefer it that way, my personal preference. Um, but some guys like to put their lights on the opposite side of the rifle, and that's okay. You do you, boo-boo. Um, and, and some of those guys use just their tail cap. That's cool too. Go ahead and use the tail cap if you want, but that's that's on you. Train to it. I'm, I'm all for setting up your rifle the way you want to set it up. Just kind of make it make sense and like work with it. 
Uh, the lights I use on all my rifles are mod lights, and all of them are the OKW heads, uh, mainly because I love it. <laughs> I, I love the beam I get from these things and the way that they uh, project that light so far. Uh, I can work and do a lot of stuff with those. So I prefer having the mod light OKW over all the other lights that are out there currently, um, mainly because I use a lot of lasers. Another great light is the Owl from uh, Cloud Defense. They make a great light. It's just big and it takes up too much space when it comes to putting lasers on guns. So it tends to sit on guns that I don't have lasers on or that I'm not using a laser on for whatever the reason. Um, mainly my three gun rifle, that one gets my, my Owl because if I need light, I can use it or I can take it off to do three gun stuff or two gun stuff. So going further down the rail, um, I like to put my rail scales on uh, where my hands are going to go primarily. So I don't just sit, uh, put rail scales or any kind of handguard covers anywhere that aren't going to be useful to me, right? That's, that's kind of a waste. I like to put things where they're going to be useful. On the bottom where my hand goes is kind of useful. On the left side of the rifle where my hand goes is pretty useful. And I usually set them based off of where my hand lands when I hold my rifle. So when I hold this thing and I look at where my hand actually ends up, that's usually where I put things. The same goes for all the switches that I put on my guns, right? For my lights or my lasers. When I'm using these kind of switches, I want them to be right there for me, but I don't want them to be where I have to move or shift my hand really far back or really far forward to reach them. I want them to be right there for me. And setting yourself up for success would be to grab your rifle, set your stock length how you like it, and then hold your rifle and shoot maybe a little bit with it when you're out in the range and figure out where the best placement for your equipment is and where you can reach your lasers, where you can reach your lights. I find that that helps a lot of people when they actually use the gun and then they realize where they put their hands and then go ahead and put your equipment there. Makes more sense than just slapping it on the rifle and hoping for the best. Now, over the years, uh, this has all evolved, right? And, and like I said earlier, we all change over time. Different technology comes out and we start to adjust the different things that we have. So from the box lasers, from the surefires, from bigger lights to smaller lights and, and lighter setups, it has definitely evolved quite a bit. And one of the things that changes quite often for a lot of guys is their handguards, right? Because there's new ones coming out all the time. So because of that, a lot of guys change these things and the circumference of them matters to an extent. If you have too thick of a handguard and your hands aren't big enough, you're not going to be able to reach your or activate your light or activate any switches on certain lasers. It's going to be rough for you. So you have to think about those kind of things when you build a gun. This, this gun here is a full build from Battle Arms uh, Development. They make uh, one called a Workhorse. is like their standard rifle for like everyday use and, and just work. And it does exactly that, which I'm very happy with. But one of the things they have are these really thin rails, which, I mean, I can almost touch index finger to thumb all the way around it, which means when I'm grabbing this thing and I'm trying to manipulate buttons, I can actually reach them. So, for example, if I'm trying to switch stuff on my mall, I can switch it, I can switch up, I can do anything I need to to this mall or my switches on like a... Uh, an Apial C or a PEC 15 style laser, or even a D ball where my, my thumb can reach. That's what I want out of my stuff. I want my things to be nice and, and even for that. Now, does it get hotter? Yeah. Does every gun get hot when you shoot it enough? Yeah. So does it matter? No, put on a glove. So <laughs> it's that easy. So don't get too uh, wound up with that. Moving further back, like I said, it's a battle arms full build. So it's their bolt. Uh, it has a Geisley trigger. I like Geisley triggers. Um, I highly recommend trying some different triggers before you go for one. But one of the things that I do with my Geisley triggers that's different, um, I don't like the single stage ones. Some guys like single stage, I don't, but that's a personal preference thing. So try getting and playing with different triggers, different setups, so that you can see what works for you and what works for your rifle. Um, going further, my optic selection's pretty like normal or like, um, how, how can I say it? Bland at this point. Uh, if it's not an Aimpoint Micro series, uh, it's an LPVO. So it's like uh, I, I cry, I've, I've been trying different optics and different 
uh, setups for a really long time and every single time I go back to the aim points they're lighter smaller stronger battery life's just amazing so I tend to stick with those and now more and more uh, the, the more rifles I get the more I'm, I'll be getting more of these aim points put onto some unity mounts the unity fast mounts uh, are absolutely my favorite I love the head heads up display that I can or I'm sorry heads up shooting that I can do with them as well as how simple they are and if you're one of those guys that has to have irons on your sight on your gun you have the ability to put just a rear or a rear front inside this mount pretty cool check them out further back uh, like I said this is full battle arms build so it has their bolt their charging handle that's pretty much my rifle setup right something simple this is my general purpose rifle because for me general purpose means laser stuff and low light stuff Hope this helps you guys set up your rifles or at least understand what I do for my general purpose rifles and why I set them up these different ways. And like I said, uh, there are some that have LPVOs on them and I'll kind of go over what my recce rifles look like in a different uh, video. So hope that helps guys. And uh, if you have any questions, go ahead and put them below and make sure you check out all the other videos I got on here. There's a lot of info, a lot of night vision stuff in general. So help yourself. Take care. Tonight my demons come out to play All my anger goes away